Welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and we have another wonderful show. I have someone who's been a friend who really is one of the most knowledgeable people about entrepreneurship and economics, uh, my friend Hunter Hastings from California. Hunter, how are you? I'm very well. It's good to see you again, Dale. Hunter wears a lot of hats. Among them, he's the host of the Economics for Business podcast, as well as um, very active in the Mises Institute and so on. Hunter, I always start with the origin. Now, where, where were you born? Where did you grow up? Um, and uh, how did you get into entrepreneurship? <laughs> well, it's a long journey, and that's the way we think about entrepreneurship, Dale, is it's a journey. Yep. I was born in England on the northeast coast, which is uh, it's on the North Sea. It's coal mining and iron ore and oh, really? those kinds of things. Yeah, we kind of think of it as like West Virginia in the U.S. It's uh, interesting. It's that interesting. same kind of history. What, what town was it? What town is it? The Outlook. It's uh, grim, I would say. It's one of those places that needs a lot of new entrepreneurship to oh, make really? it thrive. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, good. So I was able to uh, get educated, which is the the first step on the, the journey. I was uh, fortunate to do that. I studied economics. Mm -hmm. I took a job in corporate America uh, with an American company that had facilities in the UK mm, by, okay. by the name of Procter & Gamble. So I was in the, the soaps and detergent business. The, uh, on the, and mar I found on the marketing an side? Interesting thing, Dale. Uh, I'm sorry, go uh, ahead. On the marketing side or where, where were you with uh, soaps? Marketing. It was, uh, oh, really? it was brand management, they called it. Oh, nice. so I worked yeah. on a brand called Tide, which some of your viewers may be familiar with. Yeah, I use it. And the interesting thing I learned, Dale, was that my customer is mom. Mm -hmm. And mom wasn't really interested in detergent. She was interested in taking good care of her kids, sending them to school, looking, looking well, having her husband well turned out. And... and uh, it was pride and it was uh, that kind of a, a sense. So right. I learned about customers, that entrepreneurship is about understanding customers. Right. And the real skill is empathy, mm -hmm. understanding what mom's day was all about, yep. and understanding how mom felt about her kids and understanding how mom shares stories about, about taking care of the household and so on like that. I'm talking in terms of many years ago when, when mom was more of a housekeeper, so I should be right. careful about that. But anyway, I, uh, I advanced from there to uh, being a kind of knowledge entrepreneur, taking what I had learned right. and applying it in the form of consulting. How could other companies benefit from that same kind of approach? Right. And then right. eventually I started my own uh, consultancy, so I was an entrepreneur and then at the end of, of that time, I, I became a, a general partner in a, a venture capital firm helping startups, so a special kind of entrepreneurship that we were able to, to study and, and help people with investments. So that's, that's my journey story. Well, that's, that's, a, uh, that's an amazing journey. And so were you the, kind of the UK product manager for Tide? Yes, yeah, I was a, what they call a brand manager, and wow. um, Tide, Tide is not as powerful over there as it is here, but it's a, an interesting thing to start learning about global brands, how different people relate to brands in different ways, and one of my consulting companies eventually was about uh, global branding, helping people in local countries understand their local customers so they could adapt uh, international brands to the local scene. Well, that, that's a wonderful thing. I mean, we, you know, we've been we've known each other for a year now, talking you know virtually every every week, and so it's great to, because again, at, at at Wharton and other places, you know, that brand management. If you're into marketing, I was on the finance side, but that's the that's the the ground zero of of, of brand management. So, so my hats off. I didn't know that you were that you were doing that, but it explains a lot of your understanding, you know, marketing and, and entrepreneurship, and so. Um, so you really, really connected the customer, and, and you and I are and, and simpatico about empathy being the foundation of, uh, of, of entrepreneurship. And so the right. Mises Institute, how did you connect with, uh, with that? Well, my, my training was in economics, and the Mises Institute is a, uh, a 501c3 that's attempting to uh, support a, a 
particular view of economics, and I call it entrepreneurial economics. It mm -hmm. looks at economics not from the top down and right. how can governments and, and big companies control the economy. It looks at it from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. And the engine, the driver, Dale, of economic growth and dynamism and innovation is entrepreneurship. Right. Now, you can do that at lots of scales. You can do that at a small company scale, at a startup scale, but the middle class of business in the United States is, is the businesses that are driven by entrepreneurs. 99.9% mm -hmm. Dale of the businesses in the U.S. have less than 500 employees, so right. that this middle class of business. And entrepreneurial economics is what drives it. And the, what I learned was that the, the same outlook that I learned when I was uh, being of service to mom mm -hmm. in the detergent business mm -hmm. is what drives economics and entrepreneurship every day. It's right. understanding the customer. So there's a fancy term for it. It's called customer sovereignty. The customer is the king or the queen. And if you remember that, if you start all your processes with what does the customer want, what does she need, what would she prefer, then you understand entrepreneurship and you understand economics. So that's the kind of economics that we're trying to support at the Mises Institute. Yeah, and, and, and you really, I mean, you and I have a love for terminology and, and uh, you know, how words are used and, and how they're, they're placed. Um, you know, and, and, and what we, you and I are fighting against is this idea of, of, of big, you know, kind of this support the big. The big is better than, than the entrepreneur. And we know that that's, uh, that that's wrong, but, but we continue to see that the, the bigger organizations get, the less focus on the customer the less empathy they have with, their, with the people who they are. Say, say something about that. Yeah, that's correct. And it, it's very unfortunate. There's, there's nothing wrong with scale per se. You know, mm. Big doesn't have to be bad. But two things happen when you get to be a big business. One is you start to create a bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. The people have the internal rules and so on like that. They're not driven by the consumer. They're not driven by... Uh, the need to serve. They're, they're driven by compliance and other things. So that becomes anti-entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, Dale, they become defensive. They're trying to defend their current business. They call it right. market share and, and those kinds of things. That, right. that means that they're not innovating. They're not listening and asking the questions. How can we do better? How can we create new things? And that, that seems to be inevitable. So you look at the rest of the system, and that's another way we think of economics deal is as a, a system, what are all the other businesses in that system that can create that betterment for the consumer, can make people's lives better? Mm -hmm. And that's a whole melange of industries and companies from the smallest to the medium sized to the, to the fast growing. It's all of them together, mm -hmm. which is another thing that you and I talk about a lot and I strongly believe is that entrepreneurship is collaborative. It's mm -hmm. all of us working together right. How do our supply chains fit together? How do we buy all the ingredients and make those fit? Where do we get the ideas from? How do we help each other to, to make America better and make business better? So I, I, I strongly believe in the collaboration of, uh, of businesses in entrepreneurship and big companies when they're defensive are maybe not as collaborative as they should be. And, and, and I think that's really, really important because the assumption is the total opposite, is that, well, the small businesses, they're going to step on each other's toes, they're going to try to stab each other in the back, but instead it's collaborative. Our, our colleague Scott Livengood talks about co-opetition, and, and it really is, and when you, when you get granularly into the, the, the business of family businesses, of small businesses, you realize they are so supportive, they are so customer-centric, they are so employee-centric. But the, the, the media, the marketing, if you will, is the total opposite. So, so you know, given your brand management, how do, we, how do we sell entrepreneurship to the general public, to the, the powers that be? I know you've thought about that. What, what do you think? What do we need to do to, to change the mindset of, of, the, of the leaders? Yeah, I think we've done a really bad service to people by creating this idea of competition as a war. You see all of these war metaphors, you know, being in battle for market share and so on like that. So we've got to terminate that terminology, Dale, and we've got to think much more in what you, you have said as collaboration. I think of it as mutuality. So yeah. you and I are trying to create a, uh, an E-zone, an entrepreneurial zone, which would be a physical place where lots of people could, 
could have their businesses and their stores and their manufacturing centers and their, their computers and their, um, their service provision areas. And they try to grow the community. And that's the spirit of mutuality. It's we're all trying to serve the customer better. We're all trying to figure out our own place. I like to think that every business can be unique if you can find the way to serve your customer different and better than anybody else does, then it's unique. Then there is no competition. Uh, Peter Thiel, who wrote a famous book called Zero to One, said every business should be a monopoly. Mm -hmm. And what he meant by that is it's, it's, it's so different, it's so unique that that's the way the customer looks at it. I only want to buy my stuff, I'll get my service from that one business. So we've got to sell this idea, I think, of mutuality. We're all in this together. We're all growing the pie and we're all raising the bar and we're doing it together. Well, well they, they, and that's, that's such a great point because what happens though is people don't look at the full story. They'll say, well, competition is great. Look at the Giants play the, just play the Dallas Cowboys. That's competition, they're after each other. But it's co-opetition because it's mutuality because the NFL is a, a, a league. And so they're competing against Major League Baseball. They're competing against, you know, the NBA and, and other things. So they have competition, but it is cooperative competition. And people forget that part of it is that that cooperative competition, the, as successful as the NFL is, works. It works very, very well. And so it's, it's, it's really interesting that people don't think, don't look at the full story. They just think about the, the, the granular part of, uh, part of that. Yeah, and so it's looking at the wrong level. Yeah. In that case, you, you think of the team and you're a fan of the team, but yeah. actually that product is the league. Yes. And because they have the rules and because they have the television contract and because they have the ideas of how to entertain, it's the league that is the, uh, the product there. So let's have a league of local entrepreneurs who are providing that uh, that service to their community and the other thing today dale is is that's so wonderful is we're talking about a physical community but we're going to connect it to the world right the, the right. ability of the smallest most local business today to serve the whole world if you've got a unique service that that everyone in the world can can use is unlimited if we can get them the technology and the openness to uh, access the rest of the world then there's no limit to uh, what size of a firm in any location can serve the whole world. And, and, and Hunter and I connected because I had written an article, Hunter saw the article, sent me an email, and, and we've been fast friends since, uh, what was that, that was, uh, what, April of last year? Or that was a, Yeah, that was something a, like that. Yeah, a long time ago. And so we're jointly working on this, uh, building this idea that I, I started called Entrepreneur Zones, and, and Hunter is a is a co-founder of this idea and the, the idea of, of creating um, ecosystems, accelerator, incubator ecosystems in the economically challenged communities around the world to create, an, and I'm thinking about that NFL example, where we have co-opetition in that community, but create a national, an international network of these entrepreneur zones. And so, um, Hunter, talk a little bit about that. Well, it's a big advance in, in thinking Dale, and, and you're the one who's helping us advance it, and that is uh, systems thinking. So yeah. take our analogy yeah. about the, the league. The league is a system to provide entertainment to, to consumers. It's been growing and growing and, and generating more and more interest, right. more and more entertainment, more and more revenue over time. So what we're trying to do is create a system that can raise the level in a community, can give opportunity to everybody, can absorb new ideas and, and new people and new technologies and new inputs. Mm -hmm. And that system is embedded in another system, which is the, the U.S. economy, if you want to think of it that way. So right. it can draw on all the technology and ideas and, and so on of the U.S. economy. And then it's built into another system called the world, the, right. the global economy. Um, and this idea of nested systems, systems within systems, mm -hmm. is now getting people to think of new ways to accelerate growth, to end stagnation, to stop pockets of underdevelopment and pockets of poverty. We want the system to raise everybody up. Nice. And your E-zone is one system that nests into all the other systems and they'll all raise together. So it's a, just a new way of thinking about opportunity. 
Well, wonderful, wonderful. We're at the, uh, the halfway point. We're going to take a, a short commercial break, and we'll be back with Hunter Hastings on Entrepreneur's State of Mind. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, with Hunter Hastings. And we were just talking about the Entrepreneur Zone concept that we're, that we're working on to put uh, um, accelerators, entrepreneurial accelerators in economically challenged communities. Hunter, you talked about the nested systems, which I thought was really, really interesting. Say a little more about that. When you say nested, what do you mean? Well, there's a lot of new thinking and research going on, Dale, in, in universities and elsewhere about how well do we understand systems. So mm -hmm. the universe is a system, mm -hmm. and we thought we knew something about it, but we, we keep discovering new things about how it works. And uh, think of that as nested. So we've got the moon and the sun, and then, I'm sorry, the moon and the earth, and then that exists in the Milky Way, and that exists in the the universe of galaxies and so on. So uh, perspective tends to be our local system. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, we get up every day and, and work on the, the system of the Earth. Um, but this idea of the, the bigger systems and they're all working together, they're all interconnected. So at the, the smallest level, your, your E-zones idea, there are components that we have to understand. So those are people and those are firms right, and those are right, buildings right. and those are processes. Do they have the right processes? Mm -hmm. And then we've got to plug that into the bigger system. So maybe it's, it's the system of New Jersey, if, uh, mm -hmm. if that's our first location. Mm -hmm. and how can we do commerce in the system of, of New Jersey? And how can we get more and more idea flow and revenue flow and so on in, in that system? Then how do we plug into to bigger systems? And then there's the technology system that embraces it all. So we have, we have the internet and we have all of the things that technology can bring us today. So we think of systems as components, people and firms, connections, how can we connect them all together in the spirit of mutuality that we, we talked about, and then flows. How can flows of ideas come in and how can they be sent out to customers and, and the right idea flow to customers so that the revenue flows back in. So the other part of systems is flows and how can you accelerate those flows and, and raise them up. So it's this system idea of, of connections and interactivity and flows that's much more important than the way we normally think about about sales as transactions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the systems thinking is is right. very pervasive. We're learning lots of new things. Everybody in the system can win. And the most important part, I think, Dale, is that they're open systems. Anybody right. can join right. in. Anybody can participate. Anybody right. can cooperate. Yeah. It's an open system. We're just all trying to see how to make the system work as best we can. It really, when you, know, when, when, when you say this, it really makes so much sense, Hunter. I mean, it really is, is amazing that, um, that governments around the world aren't... Uh, uh, aren't talking about it. Um, just for the audience, um, Hunter and I and our colleague, Professor Scott Livengood, are going to be on a, a, a G20 uh, global conference in November that um, I'll provide some more information in future shows. 
that really will talk about Entrepreneur Zones and how it can transform communities around the world. And so Hunter, as, as you obviously have a global perspective, are the problems that we're facing with entrepreneurship in, in the US the same around the world? Is, is, is entrepreneurship undervalued in most other, other developed countries? Yeah, undervalued or misunderstood, I think, uh, Dale. I, I, I continue to believe that we in America have a, a better understanding of entrepreneurship, even if, uh, even if we still have room for improvement. Right, right. Um, but, yeah, around the world, I don't think it's well understood about, about how to turn entrepreneurship loose. Mm -hmm. I, on my podcast the other day, I had an interesting conversation with a a professor like you from Europe, and he studied over there what they call private venture capital, which is like what we have here, and right. public venture capital, which is governments trying to be in the venture capital business to, to wow. Wow. get entrepreneurship started. And his findings over lots of data and many, many years are that uh, private venture capital works and government venture capital doesn't. Oh, interesting. And interesting. that's because they can't, they can't let it unleash they can't right, turn right. it loose they feel like they have to regulate it and they have to direct the money in certain ways and they have to have uh, lots of bureaucratic rules and the idea of entrepreneurship is we can't predict it, it it's not about winners and losers it's about the system producing more value and that that's the other thing that you and i talk about a lot in in e-zones dale is it's a value generation system or right, a value right. generation network we're trying to create value for people and then that value flows back to the uh, to the firm as as revenues and as customer satisfaction and so on. And so governments don't understand this because they're not value creators. That's right. not their job. Right. They're 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 regulators and redistributors, and that's fine. It's got its role. But entrepreneurship needs to be unleashed, not not uh, regulated. Well, but, but I think part of, the, part of the problem is people, you know, the governments don't want to invest in entrepreneurship because they think that every entrepreneur has to be successful for there to be a return on their investment. But that's not true. You know, again, I, I uh, as you know, I, Jeff Bezos was at Princeton when I was there. You know, Jeff Bezos founded Amazon. Amazon, imagine, the, you know, when you could have a, a thousand businesses fail in one Amazon, that more than pays for the investment. And so, so when government starts to really understand that it's an investment and, and many of the businesses aren't going to survive, but many of them will. And those that survive will, will, can transform society. Yeah, this idea of failure is another uh, word that we have to help people use to yeah. differently, I think, Dale. Good point. There are no failures. There's right. learning. It's learning, exactly. You know, Thomas, Thomas Edison, when he invented the light bulb, he had a thousand failures before he got it right. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I didn't. I just learned a thousand ways not to do it. Right. Eventually, I found the right one. So failure is not part of entrepreneurship, but, but learning is. And so there's two solutions to that. One is long-term thinking. Mm -hmm. So Jeff Bezos is not thinking about a failure that might happen next week. He's thinking about how can Amazon grow in the next three years or 10 years or, or 15 years. So we've right. got to think long-term, not right. short-term. And then second, we've got to eliminate this idea of failure. I would supplement your point, Dale, by saying Amazon has lots of failures. Right. Uh, if, if you read any of the books that, that Bezos has written or some of his lieutenants have written, they encourage failure. They want failure. They have failure awards because right. it says somebody tried something, somebody right. learned something. So we've got to eliminate this idea of failure and think of system advance through trial and error. It's, it's experimentation. And really through learning. I mean, we, we say in the tennis, yeah. in the competitive tennis world, you either, either win or you learn. You don't lose. You win or you learn. Right. You know, yeah. and, they're both, and if they're you're both not good. learning, exactly. And, and the only way you lose is if you're not learning. But those are all, yeah. all those kinds yeah. of uh, things. So, 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 Hunter, what's next for you? You know, we're going to make this entrepreneur zone the biggest thing in the world and et cetera, et cetera. What other projects are you working on around entrepreneurship? Well, Economics for Business is building an online platform that has uh, three things. One is knowledge. We've got lots of uh, knowledge in different forms that entrepreneurs can use. It could be text, it could be videos, it could be uh, that kind of knowledge. The second is tools. Uh -huh. And I, I think this is a big step, uh, Dale, for education for entrepreneurs. Yeah, they need knowledge, how to do things, but right. they need tools. Mm -hmm. Tools about how to do it. I, how can I actually do this? So we have templates, we have checklists, we have 
processes eventually will digitize all of this and some of it can be automated so knowledge and tools and the third thing is community because the learning happens when you all talk about it so uh, we're creating a community it'll have just a lot of exchange and q a hey i tried this it didn't work has anybody else right, done this right. what did you find out and that lets you leap ahead you can you can collaborate with others to not make the mistakes they made and therefore get further ahead quicker and so uh, with knowledge, tools, and community, we think we can build a platform to help everybody be an entrepreneur. So that, that's what I'm working on. That's wonderful. And, and I think it's very timely because so many entrepreneurs, you know, it's lonely being the CEO of your own business. You're working there every day and so on. And, and, and there needs to be more collaboration, really more, more, more mutuality, as you, as you call it. And what you're doing is really trying to build that, really trying to bring people together around, uh, around their business. And I've not met the CEO that wouldn't love that kind of, uh, that kind of approach. D do you see yourself doing more internationally? Well, as you and I have talked, uh, Dale, there's no reason why there shouldn't be an E-zone everywhere in the world that, that needs one and can, uh, can benefit from it. So yeah, I don't think we should, we should think in terms of national and international boundaries these days. We, nobody in the internet thinks that way. And, right, right. Um, you know, my podcast, I'm sure it's the same for you. I talk to people in, in Asia and in Europe and, and all over the world because entrepreneurship is everywhere. So we should think of it as a, a system at every level, from the global to the local. And there's, there's no difference between those things. We're just, we're just trying to help everywhere. Have you thought much, and we haven't talked much about the youth, about trying to get this entrepreneurial mindset into the schools so that, so that, so that young people grow up with this thinking? Yeah, and that's a big, uh, a big gap and a big flaw. Mm -hmm. And I think we should be teaching people the entrepreneurial method, teaching kids from the very beginning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the, the, the lowest grade in school, the earliest grade in school. And there is an entrepreneurial method. Right. We equate it to the scientific method. You know, everybody is, is respectful of the scientific method, but we should be respectful of the entrepreneurial method. Right, and exactly. Elements of that are it's open to everybody. Anybody can participate yeah. in this at any level. It's driven by ideas. There's no requirement for resources on day one. Your resources right. are, what's my idea? Who am I? How am I going to exploit it? Right. Who am I going to collaborate with? It's, it's, we call it the bird in the hand mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. What do I have now that I can start with? And then you'll attract resources. So right. we've got to teach right. kids that that idea that um, there's no blockage, there's no barrier to just get started. Here are the ways to get started. Here's the, here's the way to unleash your inner creativity. So you talked about empathy at the beginning. Everybody can develop empathy. Mm -hmm. The second piece is creativity. Right. And everybody is naturally creative. Everybody has ideas. Everybody thinks differently than everybody else. So it gives me an advantage from the beginning. So empathy and creativity are available to everybody. We should help kids in school to, to develop those, those skills and abilities from the very beginning. That's wonderful. And that's, um, you know, um, um, Hunter, we're at the end of, of time, and that's a great way to, to end this, uh, this show. It's been wonderful talking to you here. Um, your insights and your global perspective is, is phenomenal. So I want to thank you, and I want to thank the audience. I'm, I'm losing my voice a little bit here, but thank the audience. Um, um, we will see you next week on Entrepreneur State of Mind. Take care, Hunter. We'll